Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kill this. Birdie num num. Birdie num num. Birdie num num. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Birdie Num Num podcast. I'm having a good week, and I really hope you all are having a wonderful week. Uh, we have a nice open dialogue, you and I, every week. And this week on the podcast, because we have a nice open dialogue and because you're listening to a podcast, I want to talk about something that I meant to talk about at the beginning of the year. But so what? It is April. We are not even halfway through the year yet. And that is as the title uh, of the podcast, hopefully hooked you in. And I'm getting very meta right now because the title is what this podcast uh, episode is about, which is 2021, the rise of the attention span, or better yet, the renaissance of the attention span, because we are hipsters and we like to take things back. Like when CDs come out, we prefer vinyl. And when MP3s come out, we prefer uh, CDs. And when uh, uh, MP3s are no longer cool, we prefer to take it all the way back to freaking live shows or whatever. So this is something that's been on my mind for a while because I'm sure uh, a lot of you know, we are in a very interesting time right now where if you are a lawyer or if you are a real estate agent or if you are a doctor or engineer or anything with everybody doing these Zoom calls and podcasts and interviews and panels and Instagram videos and reels and TikToks or in India, I'm not sure if TikTok is back yet, but whatever it might be, um, a lot of us are realizing that there is an overload of content, number one. And number two, a lot of us are realizing that no matter what you do, uh, eventually, like my last episode where I talked about, you got to get in front of the camera once in a while. Um, our attention spans uh, have been under assault over the last 10 to 15 years. And I know Google says do no evil, um, but indirectly, sometimes algorithms, because there is no necessarily subjective human component, you know, uh, they don't realize that although things are faster and quicker and instant and, uh, you know, more efficient and all of that, there can be, like with anything, uh, too much of a good thing. And I don't know, like a lot of you, um, over the last 10, 20 years, I found myself, it's been a lot harder for me uh, in my 20s, which is uh, quite a few years ago now. It was a lot harder for me to um, kind of pay attention when people were talking or there was like a lecture going on in school, or I found myself checking my phone a lot more throughout the years uh, while watching movies. And, you know, they say, don't judge a book by its cover, but we should probably judge the book's ability from its cover to grab your attention and keep your attention. Because like a lot of you in bookstores at the airport and whatnot, I'm sure you see an interesting book and you grab it and you flip right through it and you think, oh, okay, maybe, maybe not, right? And it's so interesting uh, in the since 2020, because of COVID, you know, it's like, I see people, yes, you know, we are uh, swiping a lot faster, and we are checking our phones a lot faster uh, when we're watching something. And if somebody sends us a video, like a funny thing on YouTube, it used to be that uh, you would watch it for like a minute or two, and you would watch the whole thing. Um, but now it's like, oh, this guy sending me a video that's more than 10 seconds. Like, can you believe the nerve of this person? Um, but now something interesting is happening as well. Like one thing I noticed with COVID is, Sure, uh, we have really bad attention spans, and sure, people are very spacey, but at the same time, you know, people are watching longer and longer shows and binging on entire series when, uh, you know, they never did before. And sure, people are swiping in the dating world, and it's so hard to like uh, have a relationship and all of that stuff. But just from the fact of COVID, yes, people are seeing a lot less people, but the people they are seeing, they're spending more time with, if you know what I mean. Like they're going deeper and bringing it back to how I started uh, this episode, which is, you know, whether you're a real estate agent or you're a, an engineer or whatever it might be, um, I think we are seeing that, sure, people are distracted. Uh, they do kind of glaze over when you're talking to them and uh, we are all about quicker and faster, but there's something weird happening, which is, what I like to call the renaissance of the attention span, because I feel like although it's a lot harder uh, to get our attention, um, the focus should now be on keeping our attention. And I personally, with COVID, have found myself, maybe it's something that as you get older, I don't know, but I found myself, I've read way more books this year. Granted, it was a lot harder for me to pick the books I was going to read because I would look at a million reviews and I would you know, see a couple of quotes and I would have all these conflicting opinions and all that stuff. But once I did uh, sit down uh, to read the book, I, I read a bunch, right? 
on Netflix or Amazon or whatever, I ended up watching a, a decent amount of shows and I'm talking 10, 15 hours, you know, um, of one show over, you know, one to two days, which I'm sure all of us do. Um, I'm not single, but I know a lot of my friends because they couldn't, you know, do the hook up with everybody sort of thing. They obviously had to hunker down and, you know, kind of pick a direction. And so something very unique is happening, um, which is, you know, like, I, I really feel that, um, you know, if you listen to this podcast, I'm sure, you know, I talk a lot about creativity and I lo talk a lot about like hacking creativity, but, you know, like if you think about like banks, for example, or my finance knowledge is a bit rusty, but like, you know, they keep reducing interest rates, central governments keep reducing interest rates because they want to stimulate the economy. But then a lot of the finance people say, well, how low can they go? You know, how low can you go? You can't have negative interest rates. No one wants to pay you to take their money to borrow it, right? That doesn't really make sense. Um, although I, I've heard that there is something in that. But anyways, I'm not going to go there because I don't know enough about it. But just like I don't think feasibly you can have negative interest rates. I mean, you can't have like negative time. You know what I mean? Yes, Google and Instagram and all the stuff you see on, on advertising and all that. It's like get their attention in like five seconds and four seconds and three seconds. You know, when I started... Uh, making YouTube videos back in, oh my God, like 2010, 2012, 2014, whatever it was, it was like, oh, if you want to get a million views, your video can't be more than than a minute, you know, or it can't be more than three minutes or it has to hook them right away. And we just kept going smaller and smaller. And then, you know, Instagram had 60 seconds and then they had uh, 30 seconds and then Vine had six seconds. And then YouTube ads were charging you or Facebook ads were charging you after three seconds. And then, and then right as we're approaching zero, then the things flip and then they're like, oh, uh, you're going to get paid for the longer somebody watches something or, oh, uh, you know, usually we see longer content does well. And, oh, my God, podcasting is a big deal. And now people are listening and watching one hour tutorials and all sorts of stuff. And so I feel like we're at a fascinating crossroads. And so for anyone who either is trying to be like social media famous or you see all your friends who are like living the glam life and maybe they get like a million views or they have 8,000 likes on like a post or whatever, I just want to like air kind of like a word of caution that, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, less is more, which I always say as well. If you have a message or like an elevator pitch or you want to be engaging with somebody, you should try to be interesting right away. Um, but at the same token, uh, you should make sure that there is some depth uh, to what you're doing. And you should make sure that, yes, we live in a time where it is very, very hard uh, to grab somebody's attention. I feel like attention is a um, a very scarce commodity uh, these days because we only have 24 hours in the day. But don't be fooled. Like once you do grab their attention, I mean, once you do go deep with that person, uh, once you do uh, get them to commit, whether it's social, whether it's professional, whether it's, you know, personal, whatever it might be, uh, there's a lot of value in that. And, you know, like I do, uh, you know, stand up comedy. That's my main thing. Uh, although it's been a while since I've done it because I've been taking a break here because I've also been looking at other things that I like doing. And one thing I noticed was when I started doing stand up comedy, it was like, okay, this person has 10,000 views or 100,000 subscribers or a million followers or whatnot. And everybody thought anybody who had followers was either really pretty or that they were, uh, you know, uh, really popular or that they were like really funny or they were like an actor or a singer. Right. Um, and there's still a lot of that going on. But now you're seeing people who are celebrities and famous and popular for niche things like or niche things, niche things like like real estate, like advertising, like the leaders in their field, like working out mental health. Uh, professional stuff, you know, the best cook, the best, uh, you know, dietitian, the best doctor, dude. And so, you know, what's the only thing cooler than being an influencer who takes pretty pictures and has like a million followers um, is being an influencer who takes pretty pictures and has a million followers. And that also happens to be a doctor or a lawyer or an advertising person or somebody who can actually use your attention to either make you better or make themselves better or in a hopefully much better way, both of you better. Right. So like, you know, uh, a lot of people in advertising would know, th would know this. It's called the funnel, you know, which is like get people kind of into your world and then try to like make money or try to sell something or have something to offer. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, even if you're, you know, I feel bad for the people who are still chasing the like, I got to put up a pretty selfie every day and get my thousand likes. Okay, but then what? 
You know what I mean? Like we live in a time right now where that itself has become a commodity and a diminishing commodity, if that makes sense, or a commodity with diminishing returns because everybody now has the pretty picture by the beach. Everybody now has the the feet, you know, with their toes out in the Maldives or whatever it might be. And so, you know, nobody's going to like, look, I don't have the data, but I'm sure freaking legs sticking out at the beach used to get 500 likes. People were like, oh, that's so pretty. I want to do that. Where is that? Um, but nobody cares as much anymore because just like with anything supply and demand, we see it all the time. So we crave it less or we care less. And that's not to say you're not interesting or, or you're not boring or whatever, but you know, like speaking of interest, like if like, you know, interest rates, yeah, they can't go negative. Um, but neither can, you know, interest or your attention. Right. So, you know, everyone is trying to be quicker, faster, uh, you know, sexier, uh, uh, cooler or whatever. But at the same time, what's also getting ironically very popular is longer, slower, uh, you know, more authentic. That was about to get sexual, but you know what I mean? Like, like be real, you know, we don't care about uh, as, as many filtered photos and all that stuff. So it's like, I know there's still a place for that, but it's just so fascinating for me to see that um, people don't realize we're kind of coming full circle uh, with the attention span. So I just, I find it fascinating. Like I've been on this like meditation trip and I've been, you know, doing a lot of like uh, online learning and investing and taking courses. And I don't know, maybe it's something that as I get older, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I prioritize. Um, but, you know, even young people I see, you know, I know people are on Discord where they're engaging with people in their community, whether it's writers, whether it's doctors, you know, I know people are on Telegram and people are going deep, right? So, you know, I, I put a video out once, uh, you know, about interviewing at Google. It's a very old stand-up comedy clip. It's on my uh, YouTube channel. And, you know, it didn't really do much uh, the first, uh, you know, few months, the first year. And then randomly something happened in like 2014 or 2015, like this video one day got like 50K views, like out of nowhere. And I just started noticing all these comments and all of that. And I was like, what's going on? And I was like, I, I like looked into it some more and I realized, oh yeah, I didn't get, you know, like 10% of India or America to watch this video. Um, I didn't get 10% of everyone to watch this video, but I got 100% of the 10% of people that are engineers watching this video, which number one is also like a hundred thousand people or whatever it might be. Um, and number two, that's awesome because that's a very valuable audience to grab that person's attention, you know? Um, and hopefully, you know, eventually have them come to a show or, you know, read my book or my blog or whatever. And so look, we're all trying, look, I, we all crave attention. It's human nature. Uh, we all like to feel appreciated and stuff, but don't get bogged down in, uh, trying to chase something that may not be there. And just when you think, uh, you know, like this is the way things are oftentimes in life, uh, you know, life does a 180 and it's like, hey, it's kind of like that, uh, but it's not really. Just when you think, you know, the secret to finding love or happiness or whatever is like fancy money, fancy car, sure, Maslow's hierarchy, there are some of that, but it's also being real, being authentic, being interesting, right? So, um, that's kind of my predictions. Uh, I really think for the next few years, I think we're going to see a lot, uh, a lot of interesting things happen because we can't all watch five second dog videos every day. They are fun. You know, I'm obsessed with these baby Yoda memes. My, my, uh, my wife and I, we like always exchange that stuff, but, uh, you know, we still like to go deep with things. We still like to have real conversations and, Eventually, you know, if you only do these like uh, very shallow, very short, very quick hit, quick serotonin, quick dopamine uh, fixes, you're going to realize ultimately that you not like you're shallow, but I, I feel like human nature, we, we crave some bit of depth and we crave being challenged. So uh, my prediction, 2021, 2022, I think you're going to see a lot more. Yes, it's going to be harder to grab our attention, but I think we're also going to increase our capabilities and patience. We're going to go deep. And once you have our attention, I think our attention is going to span a lot more. So um, if that even make, I don't, know if, I don't even know if that makes sense, but you know what, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yes, it's going to be a lot harder to, uh, you know, get me to pick up your book, to read your book or your blog. But if you get me in that first paragraph, if, if you know, if you do your job, um, and hopefully I do my job, um, you know, I think it's going to be great because we're going to be craving longer, 
slower. You know, we're going to be craving and we live in the best time right now in the world, right? Because dude, you could be like, I got so much respect for the freaking person who's hustling out there, studied medicine or studied engineering or studied whatever their craft or discipline or passion is and are doing the social media game um, and and becoming leaders in whatever it is that, that they're trying to do. Um, but recognizing that, you know, there's a lot of people like you and we're interested in your stories and it doesn't just need to be action and sci-fi and like, you know, a sex appeal and, you know, all that stuff. And dude, I'll get like the only thing better than a popular blogger or just a generic influencer is somebody who does that plus has like a feel. Imagine comedy, imagine acting. If that person, if you realize your favorite actor or your favorite comedian, hello, uh, was also an engineer and he's doing jokes about stuff that only you and your other 6 million doctor friends, you know, would know. Like, I don't think I would personally go to a show talking about radiology and like, you know, dendrocytes or nucleic acid or whatever, I don't know, telomeres or whatever medical stuff I read randomly when my wife has her laptop open. But I'm sure if there was a doctor doing like hardcore comedy, who was like well crafted in the in the world of stand up comedy, but talking about you know being in the emergency room or talking about people with COVID vaccine, you know conspiracy theories and whatnot that a lot of doctors and maybe even you know just the general public would find it interesting. So that's all I wanted to say this week. I really do predict that. I really hope also, but I do predict that we are going to see a renaissance of our attention span. And for anybody who feels like you know they're not part of the cool crowd, or for anyone who feels like um, you know this thing doesn't have enough likes or comments or whatever. I just say, I, I would just suggest stay the course. Trust me, we are going to come full circle on this. Yes, we're not going to watch DVDs or cassette tapes and all that stuff. But I do think um, those of you who don't do, like anything in life, those of you who don't follow the crowd will end up being the ones who are followed later. And when you're kicking butt because all your friends are just scrolling at memes, uh, or have very low attention spans or don't really want to do anything that takes more than five minutes, but you are doing that supply and demand, man. If you're doing what everybody else isn't doing, eventually you're going to be the one to stand out by definition. So I hope that helps. Um, I appreciate you guys as always. Let me know any comments. Uh, if you have anything you want me to talk about, do DM me, email me a comment on this podcast, whatever it might be. And I'll see you guys next week. Birdie num num. Birdie num num. A birdie num num. That's right.